You know what that is? A tire plug. I got my first flat tire today in my Tesla Model S. Um, actually, it didn't go all the way flat. I heard the noise and I caught it in time. Um, so what I just noticed was a top of a nail head there. It looked like a roofing nail. So took it in and where'd it go? Oopsie. Uh, it's called a uni seal with wire quill seal. So that's uh, I took it into Cal Tire to have them fix that. So just kind of a rubbery plug. Kind of a bummer because I was I was uh, going to put on the you know, winter tires installed soon. So it's too bad it didn't timing didn't work out a little better. Fortunately, I didn't have to use my Tesla tire inflation kit. But I thought, you know, I'd take a quick minute here to show you what I would do if I was on the highway or on a trip and needed to use this stuff. Uh, fortunately, I was in town. I heard the ticking today. I was able to get the tire off and uh, get it taken in and fixed very quickly. Um, generally, I would say, honestly, you don't really want to use the, the tire inflation kit unless you really have to because it injects a bunch of goo. But uh, from what I can tell, this is a pretty good kit. This cover pops off. So you can see there's a bottle of goo in here and it's liquidy. It does have an expiry date. And uh, it's the bottle of goo connects to a hose and then, you know, this connects up to your tire. And uh, I didn't even have to use this to uh, put air in the tire yet, which is nice. But it has a pressure gauge. Uh, that must be the switch to turn it on and off. Curiously enough, there's a hole in there, like the same product might be marketed under another brand or used in another make manufacturer's vehicle where they could secure the secure it down. Um, typical, made in China. Um, I bought this probably in May of 2015. Uh, built in July 2014 here this kit so anyway so to me that the tire inflator kit with the goo is kind of a last resort or you know you can't make it to a repair facility uh, what I had in my previous car and I also moved over to the Prius is a just had a little um, air compressor that plugs into the 12 volt uh, power outlet and a tire repair kit that includes um, how do you call this thing? I guess a rasp. So you can pull the nail out or the, the object, push that in, remount the hole a little bit, and then you can use the rubber cement with these uh, sticky plugs in this tool to actually plug the tire. That would be my preferred method as a temporary repair because it doesn't leave the goo inside of the tire, which is a pain in the butt to clean. Okay, so I thought I'd just take a second here or a minute and just kind of show you what the suspension looks like if you have. Um, a coil shock equipped, or I mean, sorry, coil spring equipped car. This is uh, the right rear wheel, tire, axle, whatever you call it. So I basically just took off the wheel. A um, little bit of corrosion in here. Um, I might just put a real light bit of anti-seize on there or something. I'm not sure yet if I'll even bother with that. Normally the wheel wheels get stuck on this surface and you can see the paint's actually kind of wearing away a little bit so I think over time it will still rust up in those spots. You can see. Okay, so we'll take a look here. Uh, just for information, this one's the park brake caliper. And uh, the other one is the main regular brake caliper, disc brake caliper. So I think the main difference from a coil suspension equipped car and a shock equipped one is basically just this here. So that's, uh, I guess that would be the shock. And it goes up. And there you see the coil spring. Whereas you wouldn't see that coil spring on the air equipped cars. You would see, uh, I guess, wires or whatever. Kind of a, maybe you might see the airbag. I'm not even completely familiar with that. Uh, what else can I identify real quick here? Oh, this is obviously your brake line, so that's like any other, you know, like any other car. Just give you a quick tour in here, if there's anything I recognize. Oh yeah, that must be the electronic actuator for the park brake. Let's see if we can 
see much. I'm just going to stop here. I'm going to turn the light on. Okay, that's better. Um, this must be some kind of control arm. Looks like it's made out of aluminum. Uh, the wiring for the park brake actuator. Uh, again, brake line back there. That's part of the big subframe, subframe assembly that would basically house all this stuff. So that's kind of the back of the subframe there. Plastic coverings, shielding on the bottom. Um, that thing back there would be, again, part of a control arm, like a lower control arm. This would be your, your uh, CV shaft or your axle shaft, I guess. That would go back, all the way back. Let's see if I can focus back there. There we go. So that must be the power split unit, uh, which would be kind of like, I guess that might be the drive unit. I'm not even entirely sure on that one. Um, so if a drive unit, you know, I've heard of other Tesla Model S, the drive unit goes bad. I, I think that might be what that is. Uh, let's see how far in here I get. The orange cables would denote uh, high voltage. And uh, I got some other wiring in there. Not entirely sure what everything is, and quite frankly, I hope I never really have to know what everything is. But uh, I recognize some of these components. Um, actually, this black, that black bar there would probably be a sway bar, anti-sway bar, anti-roll bar. And uh, this part would probably be called a knuckle. Uh, some kind of a link. Anyway, uh, as far as I know, the, the main differences on a, a coil and an air-equipped vehicle is just this this unit here. Oh, I can maybe see up there a little better now with the light on. That's all the way up. Yeah, so there's kind of a quick tour of the of the uh, suspension bits and drive axle stuff. All right. Well, I'm going to put the tire back on. Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention, just in regards to the tire pressure monitoring system. My tires are supposed to be inflated at 50 PSI, which I've kept them at. Um, and I checked the pressure on this before I took it, took it in to be repaired, and it was at 36 PSI. And interestingly enough, my uh, TPMS warnings were not indicating anything. The only reason I checked it was because of the uh, um, ticking noise that I heard. So, you know, it makes me wonder if I was on the highway and driving a long distance and the tire pressure just kept dropping and dropping and dropping, at what point would that TPMS warning be triggered? I don't know, maybe you guys know the answer to that. Um, I couldn't, I just took a real quick look in the owner's manual in the car and I didn't, uh, didn't go into great detail, but I didn't find that. Anyway, um, maybe two more tips just to let you know of. The, the lug nut torque specification is 155 pan, pardon me, 129 foot-pounds of torque or pound-feet of torque, however you pronounce that. And uh, let me see the socket size is uh, 13 sixteenths. I had a metric socket I tried also and uh, it fit just a tiny bit looser. I think it might have been a 19 millimeter. It fit just a tiny bit looser, so the 13 16 socket seems to fit good. Anyway, I'll wrap it up here, and uh, I hope the video's been helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And let me know in the comments below, uh, you know, if there's any other videos you want to see or any questions or comments you have. Thanks for watching.